the words heart attack are almost like perfect pitch marketing to scare people and scared people don't always make rational decisions. What actually is a heart attack? In most cases, it's, it's when a plaque ruptures. So you have nearly 60,000 miles of blood vessels and you have a lining of the artery called the glycocalyx that's trying to protect the arteries from getting damaged. But if plaque starts to form in the arteries, it's kind of like a pimple growing in the artery. If that pimple gets red hot and inflamed, then that pimple could rupture and then all the damaged cholesterol and cellular debris spills out into the bloodstream and then that forms a blood clot. And with that blood clot, you don't get oxygen nutrients downstream and then whatever tissues downstream will start to die. So if it's in your heart, that's going to be a heart attack. And if it's going up to your brain, that's a stroke. That's how the majority of those type of events happen. Now, the plaque itself, how much of it is made out of cholesterol? Probably less than 20%. You know, there's a lot of other cellular debris, different clotting factors, different white blood cells. Um, you know, your body basically thinks of it as kind of a, um, you know, a splinter in the wall of the artery, and it just starts forming all this different scar tissue, smooth muscle, and then eventually a lot of this plaque often will calcify or ossify. Your body basically turns it into a bone to try to seal it off. It's the calcification of arteries that's really bad. And I've seen studies showing that soft plaque, when you look at radioisotopes, it's almost all made, at least the fats in it are almost all made by gut bacteria, right? And so it's not that we ate some kind of canola oil or butter or something that turned into plaque. It's that a process in our body manufactured the plaque that has some lipids in it, but like you said, it has uh, fibrinogen and thrombin and all these other uh, immune factors or tissue growth factors that are trying to heal something. What's causing the original, quote, injury that needed healing in the first place? So I always tell patients, you know, cholesterol is needed. You know, without cholesterol, you're not alive. But there's always going to be some amount of cholesterol in a plaque. But cholesterol was coming there to try to repair the damage, and it kind of got stuck in the process is how I generally think about it. But I really think it comes down to the health of the glycocalyx and the underlying endothelium. If your glycocalyx, which is a protective gel surface, so think of taking a fish out of water and it's slimy. That's kind of what your arteries is coating with. If that coating is healthy, then the lipoproteins kind of just slide on by. The white blood cells slide on by. But if you have high oxidative stress, inflammation, stress, toxins, heavy metals, there's hundreds of things that damage that protective coating. And then that kicks off the cascade where lipoproteins start getting retained in the arteries. The intima starts to swell as more and more white blood cells come in there to gobble up the, the cholesterol particles. So you're saying we should eat more butter to make mm -hmm. our arteries more lubricated and slippery. That's what I heard, right? Or at least don't be so worried about the saturated <laughs> fat in that instance. <laughs> That's not what you said. That to be super clear. But the slipperiness of that very, very thin layer called the glycocalyx is critically important. It's something that almost no one talks about. If that's intact, you're not going to get the soft plaques. 